folks, today we're going to disbud our two baby goats. Um, we're actually not going to show the process in this video. There's a couple reasons for that. Number one, I've never done this before to goats. I've done calves before, which is similar, but I really want to give 100% of my focus to the goats and not to the camera. Today I just want to talk about why we're disbudding our goats. For those of you who don't know what disbudding is, it's actually using a hot iron and burning around the little buds on the goat's heads that would become horns to prevent the horns from growing at all. It seems that the large majority of dairy goat owners believe that disbudding their goats is best for humans and for the goats and is in fact the least cruel option in the lifetime of a goat. There are though people who believe it's cruel and who do not disbud their goats and let all their goats have horns. You know, I respect people who choose to keep horns on their goats, but we have looked really long and hard at this issue. We've read a ton and we've decided that the best option is to disbud our goats. Goats with horns can hurt each other and can hurt people more easily. Goats are not passive animals. They can be pretty aggressive. They do butt each other and <clears throat> their uh, goats can become aggressive or um, kind of pushy and dominant and can butt people. One concern is that many of our kids will end up getting sold. There's no way around that. You know, you don't know the people you're going to sell your goats to. You're not going to sell them to someone who looks totally crazy. But if you sell your goats to someone and they raise it, let's say they raise it as a pet and they, um, you know, they play rough games with the goat or they, maybe they neglect the goat a little bit and the goat gets pushy and aggressive. If the goat hurts someone, that goat is either going to spend the rest of its life isolated from people and other goats. It could also potentially be sent off to an auction house, um, which isn't the end of the world, but it would be a sad end to a happy goat's life. So by disbutting your goats, you just lower the chances that they will injure someone and become uh, labeled as a problem animal. We're gonna use this Reinhardt Model X30. It is high quality and it does a really good job. This copper metal ring gets up to 900 to 1000 degrees. And I'm working here under the edge of the house because I only want to use one good extension cord on this. So another reason that we want to disbud our goats is we are going to raise our kids around our goats. There's a big difference between a goat with horns and a goat with no horns butting you. Goats, like I said, are not passive animals and they establish, you know, dominant and subordinate relationships among themselves and they can see humans um, in the same light and they could see you or probably more likely your children as a subordinate individual. So disbutting our goats in many ways is actually, it's a protection for our goats for the rest of their lives from being labeled as a problem animal and being um, isolated or sold. Another reason to disbud is that a goat with horns is much more likely to have problems getting tangled or caught in a fence. And one more reason, not applicable to us with these goats, but possibly in the future, if you want to show goats, um, except for, I think, pygmies, they cannot have horns. So I hope that's helpful for you all in understanding why we're making this decision. It's not an easy decision. We don't want to hurt these goats. So we're going to disbud the goats now. We're going to take them one at a time to the house. We're going to clip the hair around their little horn buds. We're going to apply the iron. I've read about this extensively. I've done calves before. Um, wow. And we're going to bring them straight back to the barn, put them in with their mother, and we'll show you right afterwards. Um, they get over this really fast. All right, we're done. Kind of a relief. Um, it only took about 10 minutes to get walk them up to the house one at a time, clip their hair, disbud them, put snow on their heads, and then walk them back down and get them back with their mothers. They both nursed and went straight back to budding um, Coco's udder. 
which tells me their heads can't hurt that bad if they're going straight back to budding. There's Miss Rosie. She's still shaking the snow off her head. I think we did a good job. You okay, that, Rosie? That thing just jumped out of my arms. She you seem okay, it. Rosie. Sorry, baby. No, that's Lady. Oh, that's Lady. Oops. Sorry, Lady. Called you that's by the wrong lady. name. So here's Miss Rosie. What you doing, Miss Rosie? Oh, we did Rosie last with white spot there. Just like five minutes ago we did her or less. And she's kind of back to doing her thing. Running around. And there's Lovey. Lovey keeps making us think she's about to go into labor. We'll see her like having a contraction or she'll stand real stiff and she'll be vocalizing, but she never has really gone into labor. So we're just watching. We're checking her all the time. Checking her up as late as we stay up. Sometimes, you know, up to midnight and later. And she's not in labor, but she's really, really close. Her ligaments are super soft. She's about to have kids any day now.